he was he Hello, my name is Daniel Brown, and I did my great great uncle, Mari Gerfine. And so, he was a lawyer, soldier, and a judge over his long career. And um, he was born in 1907 on November 17th in New York City. And so, he attended Columbia University in 1926, and in 1930, he graduated from Harvard Law. And um, for the next uh, 12 years, he before World War II, he just did various off-ball jobs. Like he was the assistant for the U.S. Attorney in the Southern District of New York for two years, and then he started a private practice, which was, which lasted for two years, and then it kind of went bust. Slow day today, huh? And so um, he was the deputy assistant district for the district attorney in um in New York County. And um, it, then in 1942, World War II started, and he enlisted as an intelligence officer in the OSS, which stands for Office of Strategic Services. And so he interrogated Nazi POWs, and um, the information he um, got from them went to plan numerous World War II missions. So he held there. And then there were these things called the Nuremberg Trials, which were the trials of um, 24 Nazi war criminals. And so he was the assistant prosecutor for the U.S. attorney Robert H. Jackson. And um, he won some medals for his service. He won the Cross of the Legion of Merit, and the Office of the British Empire. And um, this is him in. So this is him in uniform. And um, this is him with his family and his wife and kid and two daughters. And so after the Nuremberg trials where he interrogated the war criminals and he went to the internment camps to gather all of the uh, all the information about all the crimes that are being committed there. He um, went back to his private practice in New York, and that one was actually pretty successful, and that lasted for 25 years. And then he was appointed in 1971 to the Second Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals by Richard Nixon. And um, his first case was a week after he had been appointed, and it was the famous Pentagon Papers. And so that was the New York Times versus the U.S. government, and the New York Times had obtained some secret documents that had been leaked from the Pentagon study which is a study of everything that was going on during um, the Vietnam War and so the New York Times was trying to publish this in a 14-part series and they published the first one on June 13th 1971 and the US government tried to take the court from to keep them from publishing the rest because the documents detailed that the Lyndon B. Johnson administration had been consistently lying to the US public about what was going on in Vietnam, like the number of troops they were sending in, the number of deaths and all the results of the battles. And so um and it also showed that Nixon, even though he was running as the peace candidate in the 1968 presidential election, that he was secretly making plans to continue the war in Vietnam. So, so pretty much all it did, it didn't really affect government security at all. And um, so he decided that the New York Times could actually publish the papers, and that made Nixon hate him for the rest of his life. And he said this um, rather famous quote. Um, a cantankerous press, an obstinate press, an ubiquitous press must be suffered by those in authority in order to preserve the even greater values of freedom of expression and the right of the people to know. These are troubled times. There is no greater safety valve for discontent and cynicism about the affairs of the government than freedom of expression in any form. No cogent reasons were advanced as to why these documents, except in the general framework of embarrassment, would vitally affect the security of the nation. So that's kind of what I admire him most for. He stood up to Nixon a week after he had been appointed by him. And he's arguably the most powerful man in the world at the time. And I just really like that he was willing to stand up to Nixon and let the New York Times publish. So, yeah.